move to the next speaker, uh, Guy Pellet. Uh, now we have uh, a, a veteran, in, uh, uh, an industry veteran, uh, which uh, invested on on-device learning uh, a lot. So Guy Pellet is, uh, 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 is uh, an expert, a veteran expert on hardware design since 1976 starting with Motorola MC6800 as application engineer. He has been innovating on high performance standing machine learning since 1993, while inventing the ZISC 36 with IDM Paris. He and family then moved from France in 1996 and co-founded General Vision in 2000. Since, the General, uh, um, since then, uh, General Vision has licensed it's a, a neuromens or ZISC technology giving birth to four additional successful neuromorphic from 2007, 2022, including the entire theory for neuromens. So uh, thanks uh, again, uh, Guy, uh, to accept uh, this invitation and the floor is yours. Okay, well, thank you, Daniel. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm very glad to be able to uh, uh, explain to you a little bit what we do. Uh, what you what you can see on my background is not a tablet of chocolate. Uh, it's a thousand year old chip uh, that we did back in uh, 2007. Uh, and uh, what you can see also, all the little blocks are actually memory uh, with each one as uh, its uh, learning and recognition logic on each memory. So, so basically, um, uh, the tablet of chocolate that you saw behind me was done in 2007. Uh, so, so basically, here, yeah. um, uh, this is what we call the brain card. It's a, it's a little card that we did uh, back in uh, 19, uh, uh, it's actually 2018, uh, where there is a two neural network chip uh, radial basis function. And uh, it's able to learn and recognize. And uh, thanks to ST, we use also uh, MEMS and, uh, uh, for speech recognition and other things. So this, uh, this is actual uh, product. Uh, here we can see a device which is making anomaly detection uh, in a very big seal factory. Uh, each little dot actually uh, show where is, uh, where is the system installed. Uh, and basically, it's a vibroacoustical uh, anomaly detection based on radial basis function and uh, developed by a company, uh, Neurotech in Lithuania, uh, which has installed this system, uh, uh, which are operational since 2018 uh, in this uh, very large steel factory. So it gives you uh, an idea of the application. Uh, here you can you can see uh, on the uh, on the left. I don't know if you can see my cursor, uh, but on the left you can see um, uh, uh, ten ten chip. Uh, each chip has uh, uh, five hundred and seventy six neuron and uh, is manufactured by our, our licensee Nepes in Korea uh, together with the zinc. So that gives you some idea of uh, how this can be applied. Uh, the power is coming by uh, Ethernet. So this, this gives you an idea of, of this. Uh, this is uh, IP67, uh, fully uh, waterproof and watertight. Uh, there is no fan. Uh, it cannot be any fan. Uh, so And uh, obviously, it's uh, installed in, uh, in a steel factory. So you can uh, imagine that it's pretty hot. Uh, in this steel factory. So this is where uh, tiny machine learning has to be also very cool uh, because you don't want to eat as a device in addition. So now, uh, because we were speaking about heat, uh, I suggest that, um, I don't know if uh, sharing my screen, uh, I want to make sure that uh, you hear the sound. So this is a very relaxing application. Uh, which was done by a very large company in Hawaii uh, for uh, making sure that uh, they, they actually uh, uh, take all these, uh, the, what we call ripe cherries, uh, cherries of coffee. And uh, this has been in use uh, for about three years now. And uh, so it's very relaxing. 
So you can see uh, on this uh, link, you can see many more uh, uh, operational uh, application of uh, of neuromorphic. So this is done with very few neurons, actually. Uh, but um, uh, the application that I showed before uh, in the steel factory need, need uh, about uh, uh, 5,000 neurons. So. Anyway, um, I, I, I'm going to go much faster on it. So the neural network is actually uh, is actually installed on the machine as well. Okay, so let's go to our next slide. So, so basically, uh, we we come to the assumption that uh, uh, it's interesting to replicate the functionalities of the brain, which is basically being able to learn and recognize, uh, and and to a certain extent transfer the, the knowledge. Uh, but uh, we don't think uh, it's necessary to replicate exactly the brain uh, so at the biological level. Uh, because, uh, like a plane, uh, is not very efficient flapping wings, you know. So basically, we came to the conclusion that there are some uh, features of the of the brain, of the biological brain for any animal or including ourselves, which are which are interested to um, uh, to uh, actually uh, replicate, uh, but uh, not def definitely not with the same uh, technology. So simple, simple things. It's a history of the of the classifier, and, uh, and to this extent, you know, I'll, I'll go out of the. Uh, can you see? Yeah. So I'll go out of the um, uh, second of the presentation because I like to to show you uh, very quickly uh, when it starts with. So this uh, this book here. It's not very easy with the with the background. Uh, this book here, this is the first classifier uh, you can see uh, back in 1972, uh, which is fully analog at the time. Uh, so it was done by Professor Bruce Bachelor uh, in Cardiff, Wales, and uh, it was making uh, analog classification at the time uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, their uh, system. So he, he is the one we actually uh, invented uh, the back propagation, uh, uh, but it was uh, it was fully analog. So, so artificial intelligence is not quite well. Actually, people were not calling that uh, artificial intelligence, but it's not quite new. Uh, it was a dark dark uh, uh, time where it was forgotten, and then it came back. So, to come back to the uh, technical stuff, obviously, thresholding techniques are not very good. The perceptron method was invented a while ago, and, uh, and backpropagation has many further, uh, everybody claim it. Uh, and um, basically, uh, the problem is uh, you're splitting the feature space by hyperplan. And uh, one thing is missing is um, the uh, uh, idea of unknown, uh, because uh, typically, if you know everything, I'm sure that's the case for everybody, uh, every one of you, uh, if you know everything, uh, you cannot learn because each time uh, you you see something new, you say it's déjà vu, you know. So that's a problem. So then, radial basis function uh, was actually started. The first classifier was uh, started by Bruce Bachelor, and uh, we uh, we have been using this for technology uh, because uh, we consider that uh, it's a uh, very efficient uh, for many application. Uh, so. I try to go to the next. Okay, so one one of the big problem with this or any neuromorphic application is that the, the time or the latency actually increase with the number of of neurons. And what we designed with our, our friends at IBM France back in '93 uh, is a winner takes all, which actually allow to have um, a latency uh, which is the same. Uh, regardless of the number of neurons. So we have experimented for the US uh, defense uh, with a 1 million neuron configuration, uh, finding, uh, recognizing one pattern 
uh, over 1 million uh, actually take 10 microseconds uh, constant, regardless of the number of neurons. And learning a new pattern, let's say you have 900,000 patterns and you want to learn a new one, uh, it takes uh, uh, 10 microseconds as well. So, and, and the power, uh, well, the power of the million neuron at the time was uh, about 20 watts. So it was quite, quite big. So this is um, obviously one thing which works very well as we speak, uh, all of us here, is multiplexing. You know, the internet is best. Uh, everything is coming on a couple of wires uh, as we speak. Uh, either by the antenna or by the coaxial or, or, or by uh, uh, internet, internet cable. So actually, the, the nature is not really good at multiplexing. You know, it needs to put all the wires where obviously in electronic and especially in digital electronic, we are very good at multiplexing. Uh, this is why we have uh, television and you can hear me and, and see my presentation. So uh, wiring is a complicated, and I mean, parallel wiring is a complicated, a complicated thing. And I think the biology was very good at that because it does not invent the multiplexing. So in terms of the power of a, a nonlinear classification a classifier, uh, and I mentioned uh, we implemented that with um, a parallel uh, uh, architecture, fully parallel architecture, which was actually developed from something we did uh, for Carlo Rubia uh, at the CERN in Geneva uh, back in the 80s uh, for, for pat pattern recognition uh, at the time. So one very important thing is you can have um, uh, embedded, uh, you can have embedded uh, uh, categories uh, you can have different categories, also different representation of the uh, uh, different categories. And um, uh, uh, things like uh, Cypher and so on are very nice. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I've been in the army and, and when you want to detect like a, a, a battle tank, you generally see just a very little part of it, uh, just like a wheel or maybe uh, the tip of a barrel and so on. So you, you never have the occasion uh, to recognize the whole thing. Uh, so you have to actually uh, make reasoning based on perception after. So here is an application for, uh, 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 which is anomaly detection and different kind of, uh, different kind of uh, uh, detection of like anomaly detection and, and this kind of thing. So this has been, this is the same thing which is running in the, in the steel factory, uh, where, where obviously uh, the coffee uh, classification is more like a classification uh, between ripe and unripe uh, cherries. So here it's, um, uh, you can see an anomaly and you can detect the anomaly just because it's, out, it's totally out of the uh, known um, uh, feature space. So uh, one of the targets, and actually we, we licensed back in the, uh, 2012, uh, we, we licensed this little company by the name of Intel, and uh, they make uh, something called the Curie. Uh, the Curie is actually including um, uh, CPU, uh, which was not so good actually, because it was 80, 86 best CPU. Uh, together with MEMS and uh, only 128 of our neurons, but still they were able to detect uh, abnormal vibration and make anomaly detection on different different things like uh, like uh, actually uh, ball bearings and things like that. And and some company are using still the software version of this things. So uh, other application is uh, this application which is being doing by uh, by a customer. And uh, this is about uh, classifying anomaly on a wafer, uh, where you can see here, one of the problem in, in uh, wafer uh, fab is uh, it's uh, very easy uh, to detect uh, uh, anomalies uh, and, and companies like KLA 10 cores and things like that are doing that very well. As uh, the problem is to classify the anomaly uh, to know that uh, this, um, this anomaly uh, is uh, is actually at this stage of the manufacturing, 
like here is one anomaly it's many other uh, kind of anomaly and uh, very often you have to learn as as you, as you go so this is a kind of a, in, in that case we are making feature extraction uh, to detect anomaly texture like this one can be a little bit like a sponge you know and and some of them are actually uh, really a piece of silicon so it's different from one to another so these are application uh, and here is uh, is coming to a very interesting application actually uh, uh, which is has been done by by nepes uh, in in korea with we, we make the little uh, 576 neuron chip and they, they pilot a robot uh, by human motion uh, by by gesture of the, of the arm uh, and uh, activity monitoring here, uh, if the people are running and so on. One of our customers recently uh, asked us and we had a good result, uh, which are not finished, but good result, to recognize a person by the get, by the way the person is walking. So it's one of the applications for identifying a person. And uh, blood pressure monitoring, I'll come back to that. And uh, uh, guest tracking has been done also by other customers. Uh, actually, uh, also on the on the Samsung here, uh, Nepes did face recognition inside uh, of uh, of the Samsung using a chip. So here is a, is kind of my favorite uh, application, uh, which is uh, being being done uh, using the brain card that I show you, uh, which uh, basically is uh, is using uh, opt optoelectronic sensor. Uh, to uh, monitor the blood flow, and uh, it will allow to make a permanent uh, permanent monitoring of the blood pressure uh, without uh, the person being aware of it. Well, obviously, it will be aware of it, but he would just forget uh, of it uh, because it's uh, it's permanently non-invasive and is using a pulse transit time. And, and this is a kind of gadget that uh, I, I'm sure that many of you have on your, your watch uh, for making blood pressures or pulse rate. Uh, the problem in this, uh, these watches, uh, all of them, uh, except for M1, which is as a little micro curve, uh, this watch's the problem is uh, uh, the classifier is very weak because uh, they have to tr make a trade off between battery life and making a, a, a very classifier, uh, putting a, a GPU in a watch is not a good proposition. Uh, so you need to find something else. And this is what we are doing. We actually are running the neural network, which has no software, so, uh, the NM500. Uh, we are running it at one kilohertz clock uh, because it does not have to read instruction. And uh, one of the big problem today is the Vonneman bottleneck which is basically, if you are reading instruction, you need to go fast. And uh, I mean, it's like the same thing if you're driving your car and as you drive your car, you're reading the instruction manual of your car, uh, it can be both slow and dangerous. So it is very important to know what to do next. So this is uh, what uh, the, the name is very bad uh, to say is a photoplatysmogram. Uh, which is exactly what, what we saw before uh, with a photo detector. And there are many, many companies doing these things now. And uh, in various different places uh, where you can actually have that on the arm, on the forehead, and so on. And for us, uh, even if the signal is more noisy, we, we, we prefer to take it on the ankle, actually, uh, because it make, uh, it's easier and it's more stable. Uh, so this is a kind of application which is in process. Uh, this kind is a lot of bibliography. If you look, if you look at the at the web, uh, this this is used for detecting COVID. Uh, this is uh, used for predicting a Parkinson uh, uh, occurrence uh, very quickly. Uh, also, uh, obviously, it's used for uh, detecting seizure or epileptic uh, things. So it has many many applications. And here you can see uh, on the left the PPG uh, curve. You see, uh, so uh, this is a this is an ongoing application, and uh, General Vision has a, has a pattern called monolithic image perception device. Uh, the idea 
is to put everything into the same device, including the classifiers and the transmission. So this is uh, what what is given here uh, is um, this is the kind of things where you can see uh, in the, in the PPG uh, what is happening when you get the epileptic seizure. You know, it's kind of things which can be detected. And the good news is it can be it can be detected about thirty seconds uh, before it occurs, uh, which is enough for giving an early warning uh, on that. So this is another one which is done with uh, AMC, and and here you can see the NM five hundred chips uh, manufactured by uh, by Nepes in in Korea, uh, and uh, actually here. Also, what is very important is in order to expand the network, you just have to connect all the pin of, of every chip together. Uh, the only thing uh, which is not connected uh, in parallel is called um, the DCI, DCO, DCI chain in, DCI chain out. Uh, it's just something which is one chip telling the other chip on DCO, it's your turn to learn uh, because I, I, I'm full. So this gives you uh, some ideas of what can be done. So actually, um, NEPES or Korean uh, licensee make many products, uh, NeuroShield. Uh, you can see the size of the chip is a 4.5 millimeter, uh, NM 500 uh, this, this one, uh, the big one, the same one k was done in 130 nanometer technology. NM500 is known in um, 110 uh, nanometer, and we just licensed a customer in uh, in Taiwan, which is as no a chip, uh, which has 5,500 neurons, so it's 10 times more chip, about the same size, but it's done in 55 nanometer, and uh, it's actually available from this company, Alpha Plus, in Taiwan. Uh, right. So it gives you some idea. So here, uh, well, it's, it's just showing you the tools. Uh, this thing is called, uh, as you can see on the very top, it's using simulation. Uh, this is a uh, image knowledge builder where you can uh, actually experiment very quickly. And actually here on the lower things here, you can see the content of the neuron, which is very important uh, because um, uh, obviously like, like in the defense here in US, uh, they want uh, explainable AI. So they want to know what is inside of the neuron in order to be able to backtrack what has generated the neurons. Uh, it's crucial in many applications uh, because um, uh, in, uh, in uh, things like uh, TensorFlow and so on, uh, it's possible to produce the, the knowledge and to make the, the things having hallucination, uh, which can be pretty dangerous for defense. So this is, uh, this is typically uh, using the image knowledge builder, uh, what can be done, and the image knowledge builder is running on Windows and can be connected to the hardware, uh, uh, either on the neural shield that you can see here, or um, the brilliant USB, which is um, a USB key with uh, 2,000 uh, neurons. So you just connect the, the brilliant USB to the to the PC. Right now, actually, it has been connected also. Uh, by some user on Raspberry Pi uh, and Arduino as well. So this is another application of the image uh, knowledge builder, uh, which has been um, a quick training, uh, very, very rough on detecting balls. And uh, here it's, uh, it, it used only 22 neurons for detecting all the balls and uh, the learning was not finished. So, and uh, this is just a drug. You might have seen that on, on my, uh, my LinkedIn, uh, but uh, I'm living very close to a lagoon. And uh, speaking about artificial intelligence, this little duck, uh, when they are following their mother, they are, three, uh, they are three days old. So obviously they are quick learner. I don't think they are deep learner initially. They are very quick. Uh, and uh, they work, and actually if you put them a little, uh, food, they, they jump on it like crazy, you know. And um, typically they, they start flying after a few weeks. So it, uh, it kind of humbles us uh, in terms of what the results we are, are reaching now uh, comparatively to what the simple uh, uh, creator can do. 
So this is uh, this is more or less a presentation. Uh, so j just just for the fun of it, uh, I think we still have a few minutes. Uh, just for the fun of it, I want to show you uh, what 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 is possible to to do uh, with uh, only uh, three neurons. So this, this actually this thing was done by Pascal Dr. Pas Pascal Tanov. Uh, uh, in IBM Paris back in, in 94. So here you, you can see that um, I, can, I can move and, and actually the Korean guys did that with a real car, a real model car, sorry. So this is an example of what you can do with free neurons. Well, actually this you can, if you want to have fun, you can download it for free. Uh, from our website. So now if I stop it and uh, I, I make a different uh, road, if you say, uh, it will it will normally generalize enough uh, to to follow the road. And um, so here, if we, if we look at the knowledge, uh, this, this is the knowledge. So basically, we just make a subsample of the image. And this is the vector which is entered into the uh, radial basis function network. And you can see that this the category is, uh, is the heading, heading of the things, you know. So these are the neuron. And uh, if, if I, and that will be uh, the end of it. Uh, if I uh, actually uh, load a, a different background, like uh, the standard background, and I clear the neuron, I forget the neuron, and I, I start driving, you can see that it stops immediately. So I will say, okay, when you see that, do that. So there are two neurons. So this is what you can do with, with two neurons. So anyway, if you want to have fun, just download it from our website and uh, play with it or train your kids with it. You know. So let's, let's give you an idea of, uh, okay. Let's give you an idea of what is possible and what is done. And obviously there is still a long way to, to go but the, the best way to do it is to really make real application and learn what are the difficulties. And obviously, the scientific things is also very important. Thanks, uh, Guy. Um, uh, thank you so much for uh, for your speech. Uh, and I'm glad that you accepted because you are an industry veteran representative and we need uh, this kind of witness uh, in, uh, in, uh, the, in the forum. Uh, before uh, I switch to the next presenter, I would like uh, very quick uh, uh, answers from you, uh, please, uh, because we are close to the, the, the line of your slot. Uh, there is a question about uh, about the energy efficiency and the number of operations associated to your approach. Uh, yeah. Maybe you can comment uh, why and uh, how it is uh, low complex. Yeah, definitely. Actually, uh, we say we always said that memory is intelligence, and uh, memory is not a processor. Don't take a, a lot of uh, things. And to answer the question, uh, the new the new chip uh, that is here, I'll try to show it. Uh, we, is a, this tiny chip, 5,500 neuron, uh, is equivalent to 0.7 uh, teraops uh, per, uh, per second. And uh, the, uh, basically, uh, the, the energy by giga, uh, by uh, giga ops, uh, is 0 0.011 milliwatts. So 11 microwatt by giga ops equivalent. And when we say giga ops of equivalent, meaning that if you want to do the same thing with a, a, a risk processor, okay, you have to run at this speed. 
Uh, Guy, another uh, question that uh, I have, personally I have. Um, on device learning, you saw from the first uh, two speakers, uh, requires uh, some expertise. I think uh, Charlotte and, and Georgia have a lot of knowledge. You see also, you saw also the presentation, the mathematical explanation. Now, you deal with customers. And when dealing with customers, things shall be simple. Otherwise, they get confused. Let me say as simple as that. How your on device learning, if you, you, you have a lot of experience, was received by customers in the normal day usage. Why, in your opinion, if you can quickly say it was simple for you, what was the main reason? Yeah, I, actually, uh, I, I recommend people to uh, participant to go to our YouTube channel, to general YouTube channel. One of the application which has been fielded since 2007 uh, is uh, fish sorting. Uh, on, on fishing vessel uh, in Iceland, and they're still using it. And uh, coming to your question, what's happened? It was in, uh, I think it was in uh, December uh, 2008. Uh, they, they send us a request because they say, well, we got a problem because the things is not working very well and uh, is, is not, uh, is making some mistake on the herring, uh, looking for the herring. And they send us some picture. Uh, of the herring, and we say, well, for us, they don't look like exactly the same. And then the, the fisherman came to us and said, well, you are stupid because in uh, in winter, the herring has more scale, you know. So so basically, it was not really known by us. So we, have, we had a, a, a very easy touchscreen system where we can show and tell. And uh, basically, we say, okay, well, just uh, show another or maybe 20 images of the current herring. And uh, then a uh, couple of hours after this, and, and, and we're speaking about fishermen, uh, not, uh, not PhDs people. And uh, then uh, a couple of hours, they send an email and say, well, we, we create like four whole neurons and everything is back to normal, you know. So this is where it's very important to, to be, and, and we have some video about that actually. Uh, it's, it's very important to be able to have uh, what we say, un uneducated, at least in the AI field, customer uh, being able to do this kind of thing, you know, show and tell, like when you show a uh, toy to a kid or thing like that. Like. Okay, so essentially your solution was uh, really fitting the need of having, uh, or lightly saying, uh, 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 fitting the needs of uneducated people in terms of AI, let's say, algorithms. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, very, very, a lot of demand, a lot of demonstration of that on the, on the general vision uh, YouTube. Okay. Thanks a lot, uh, Guy. Uh, much appreciated your time and your availability. All the tiny ML operations are possible thanks to the strategic partners, which are uh, co provided in the support and commitment uh, to make uh, the keep. Uh, a successful all the operations, the different events that uh, Tiny Mesh Foundation organized. So thanks to IZIP, Analog Devices, Arduino Arm, Brainship, Edge Inputs, Greenwave, Technology Groverty, IBM, ImageBob, Infineon, Inatera, Microsoft, Not AI, NXP, Polling Technology, Pixel, Falcom, Renaissance, Schneider Electric, Sensimil, Sony, Silicon Labs, ST Microelectronics, Synaptics, Intian. Then our ex executive strategic partners, Edge uh, Impulse, as I said, Qualcomm, uh, Sintient, the Platinum One, which are Renesas, uh, then uh, Aitrios, Gold strategic partners uh, are Analog Devices, Arduino, oops, Arm AI, Infineon, Innatera, Microsoft, Sensimil, ST Microelectronics, Synaptics, 
and the silver strategic partners, as I said before, IZIP, BrainChip, Greenway Technology, Groverty, IBM, ImageMob, not AI, NXP, Polyn Technology, Quixo, Snyder Electric, and Silicon Labs. Uh, all the uh, rights are reserved to the Tiny ML Foundation. And uh, thanks again for your time, for your passion, also the extra time. <laughs>